What is up everybody? It's Alex from Heavy New York calling from the quarantine zone again. And this time we got Kina from Constellation. Thank you so much for your time today, man. I appreciate it. Cool, man. What a problem. Happy to be here. Yeah. And for the record, it's Constellation, not Constellaria, as I said in my review. Thank you for the correction. No, no problem. <laughs> yeah. But I really enjoyed the language of limbs. It was a beautiful album. I really want to know, starting off with, what was the thought process when making this album? Was there like a preconceived idea or was there a lot of improvising involved? Like what was the thought process in the making of this album? Cool. Uh, the, I guess um, at the time when Gideon and I started, when we got together to, you know, to like work on this project, I think we both... I don't know, it felt, like, it felt like it was sort of out of necessity that we made this record. It, it kind of just it kind of just happened and our sort of personal lives informed it. I mean, there were certain things like, I mean, we knew we wanted to make something sort of in the black metal sphere that had a lot of melodic elements and we knew that we wanted to do like four tracks on, on the album and have there be like the sort of long more progressive style. Just because, I don't know, we're in this like weird streaming age now where people don't really have the, how can I say, like sort of, um, I don't know, just the, the patience to listen to a whole record. So we thought it would be easier to split it up a bit and, you know, not exceed the uh, 35 minute mark. So um, they were all like all these sort of technicality things in terms of that. But I don't know, in terms of the actual writing process, it came very naturally. It just yeah, we just kind of met up and this is the songs we wrote and the way we wrote them, that's how they appear on the album. Mm -hmm. that, that's a breath yeah. of fresh air to hear because with so many bands writing like 27 minute long songs that are and, and like a 10 track album, and like this album yeah. was very short. It, it almost seemed like you, you there was no other option. You wanted it to be just four songs and keep it that exactly. way. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Like, um, And I think in terms of our sort of musical palette, I think we kind of covered all our bases with it. We didn't, you know, there was some, you know, there's like the progressive moments, there's the very like kind of soothing, calm moment. There's obviously the heavy moments and the climatic stuff. So we, I don't know, we felt that in terms of our, like what we want to do um, on a musical level, I, I feel like we, we touched on all of that. So I, we couldn't be happy with it. And we think it's like quite a cohesive album, although it is only 35 minutes long. Yeah, well, quality over quantity. And what I feel like is, I feel like every song on this album led up to another. Like, All Nights Belong to You, after that, I have to listen to In Acclamation, and then I have to listen to Imperium. Yeah. You don't recommend that people, like, listen to this album on shuffle or something like that, right? No, exactly. And that's, I mean, we, we wrote it with the intention of people listening to it from beginning to end. And I don't know, for me, I haven't listened to it in a while, but... It goes by pretty quickly. It's just sort of like, you know, flashing the pan, but I think it's nice because it, I think there's a lot of replay value there, you know? Definitely. I think I think it's like one of those things where you'll discover something new with every passing listen. Yeah, I hope so. I hope so. Yeah. Was there ever maybe like a lyrical concept that this album revolved around? I, like, is there maybe yeah. like, does every song have its own meaning or is there kind of like an underlying concept that applies to everything on this yeah. album? Yeah, I, um, it's, it's funny because I did an interview last night actually and uh, the guy asked me to kind of like elaborate on the themes on the album and um, so I'm quite, I'm quite glad that it's like session I'm in so it's easier for me to talk about it but um, in terms of this, the, the album is definitely one that I feel is quite human, it's something that uh, as, as I think it's quite a sensitive album and it's like, uh, it has this sort of mournful, kind of nostalgic, romantic element to it. And it was sort of born out of uh, a relationship that came to an end about two years ago and this kind of prompted, almost prompted the entire band actually. Um, I think it was just some uh, sort of musical catharsis that we needed to do um, and that's definitely the theme that um, yeah can kind of be found throughout the album. So I would say it's like a, it's, a, it's an album that is about uh, kind of it's quite obsessive actually, and it's also about sort of overcoming, overcoming and like kind of triumphant. I would say so. Those would sort of be the lyrical theme. Mm -hmm. I, did, did this theme? Did you think of this theme before you started writing any of the music, or did you need like music before the the theme and the concept came into play? I, you know, it kind of what I was. I would say 
quite a sort of natural symbiosis because I think certain certain parts or themes inform some of the music and then also vice versa. So I'd say we kind of did it, um, they sort of coincided with each other. Um, but there was no idea initially, but these are, those are the themes that sort of kind of kept on coming up, you know. Mm-hmm. Do you want the album to be open to interpretation or could, or like, could, do you want the listener to kind of be engaged into the meaning behind it? No, not necessarily, you know, I, I feel that if it's um, some sort of an emotional release for people, to me that's like the best thing that I could hope for it, right, in terms of like how you'd make people feel, it's, um, you know, and they can uh, kind of put their own meaning on it, I don't, I don't mind that so much, it's, um, for me, it's, like I'm, I, I know people, especially especially in metal, and I'm, I'm I care a lot about lyrics and themes and stuff. But I know everyone doesn't listen to music for that reason, you know. So if people are getting some sort of enjoyment out of it, that's cool. They don't need to like read into the the content. But if they want to, it's there. And I think it's pretty fleshed out. But it's also I think a lot of the lyrics are very metaphorical, so people can just kind of interpret it in the way they want to. I'm not too uh, fussed about that. Yeah. Well, analyzing the lyrics, I thought they were very metaphorical, but the music itself almost, I felt, I felt like if this was, and not to discredit the vocals at all, but I almost feel like that if this was an instrumental album too, that it would convey yeah. the meaning that you were saying. Oh, cool. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah, I definitely think um, there's a lot of color and, and shades on the album and like, um, and I think the songs are written in a way so that they sort of flow and there's like a sort of feeling of like an ebb and flow, like quite natural ebb and flow to it, which I think it would work as an instrumental album for sure. Yeah. And I, I consider this album to also be, in terms of sound, fairly experimental because of all the different sounds that are incorporated in it. Is it fair to say you guys yeah. like to try new things and experiment with your style as much as possible? Is that like a goal for the band? Um. No, no, not necessarily. But I think I think it's also just drawing on a lot of influences, and obviously we listen to a lot of music. And I think you know we're not trying, we're not forcing anything. So I, I, I mean, it's, it's interesting to hear you say that because it's definitely not a conscious thing to be like, oh, let's um, you know kind of take it up here, or bring it down. I mean, of course, those are um, intentional, but the feeling that we try to invoke isn't or like experimentation, so to speak. It doesn't feel really like an experiment to us that. I think everything's quite considered, if that makes sense. Yeah, uh, you have so many sounds that that just becomes the formula and that just becomes the yeah. sound that defines you guys. Well, at least what we're trying to do, yeah. Like, uh, the, the song will obviously take on different structures depending on what exactly we want to say. But often, when we talk about a song, and especially because I think we always think about the song in relation to the entire record, it's, it's like, where does this fit in on the album? What have we not done that we can still do that doesn't feel like a stitch for us? At least where it's not gonna, you know, alienate people. Um, yeah. So I think I think it's more about that thinking um, in terms of what the song needs and how that relates to the entire album. And if that sort of, you know, uh, ventures into like experimentation, then I think we definitely up for it. You know, I think we're gonna definitely pursue that more on our next one. Yeah, and when I say experimental album, some people misinterpret it as like one song is death metal and then the next song is smooth jazz. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But one thing I'm really curious about is, and I ask every artist this, but like, when it, like, All Nights Belong to You is eight minutes and then you have a song like The Garden that's 11 and a half minutes. Like, at what point, how do you know that the song has said everything that it has to say? (laughs) That's a very, that's actually a really good question. Um, I think I think a lot of it has to do with like intuition and like your feeling, um, because I mean obviously there are ways that you can kind of intellectualize the whole thing, but I also kind of feel that that's where it gets a bit too academic rather than you know like an emotional response to something. So sometimes you want to get lost in the song, and I think also if you're writing it and you in the moment where you where you like oh man this feels good it should happen again like this part is it's not done yet you know. And sometimes you want a part, you know, that's kind of like four bars, kind of acts as a transition or whatever. Um, yeah, I think I think that's just really up to you as like the discerning person behind making the music. It's like cool. This is this feels like the right amount of time for the section to repeat or for the song to go on for. You know. 
Yeah. And, like, does it just happen that way? Or do you sometimes say, let's make a longer song, let's make a shorter song? Or does it it just... Uh, yeah. Oh, we definitely, like, I, I don't know, for me, my, like, some of my favorite bands, um, I don't know, they, they tend to write really long songs. And sometimes I'm like, you know, let's, let's see if we can push it to that point. But obviously not to the point where it's getting taxing or it feels like we're forcing ourselves you know i mean for this so we're working on our new one now and we really want to do for the second song to sort of mimic in acclamation but on a complete opposite way but and like not have any parts that repeat in the song so once you hear the section that's it and you'll never return to it we would like trying our hand at that but it didn't quite work out but there are certain things that we do we go okay let's try this like for Language of Limbs when we wrote Imperium, we were like, cool, let's structure the song in a sort of verse, pre-chorus, chorus kind of way, and then have a bass structure, almost like a pop song, essentially. And that's why that song is so straightforward. And I mean, yeah, it's six minutes, which is kind of double the length of a pop song, but in terms of the way it flows and stuff, it actually flows like one of those. So there are different um, intentions in terms of what we want to do, how long we want certain songs to be, um, but sometimes, yeah, if it doesn't work out, but, you know, we don't we don't uh, stress too much about it. We mm-hmm. just kind of adapt. So you mentioned you're working on new music now, So and it's fair to say you're not making just a direct continuation of the language of limbs. This is going to be like a stand-up. Oh, stand no, up. not at all. Yeah, I think um, I'm, I'm, I'm really fucking excited about this new one because I feel like it's such a step up from the first album because also um, bear in mind that Gideon, my partner, and I, like, we've only been working together for a year now so it's very new this whole relationship is extremely new and um, already I can see by what we're busy with now it's just a bit more up my alley musically because I just feel like it's not so oh this is a post black metal band anymore because I feel like it's I mean ultimately I think at least for me my goal in terms of being in a band is to kind of like stand out you know I mean as you know someone who covers music there's shitloads and shitloads of heavy bands and I know, I kind of want to, I'm hoping that with the next one, it's a real, it's going to be a real statement uh, from outside, I think. And it's just trying new things on the vocal front. And yeah, it's, it's a lot more progressive and a lot more, I guess, esoteric in a way, if you can call it that even. Yeah. Well, I never understood what this term post-black metal is because they call that to death heaven. They say that about asteroids. Yeah. They say that about Numenorean. Like, if you don't mind me asking, yeah. I might be putting you on the yeah, spot. Yeah. But how do you define no, post-black okay. metal? So I think post-black metal is essentially, and 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 you guys from the States have like a big hand in sort of coining that term uh, because it's basically, I, I think, taking post-metal in the sort of vein of like maybe Neurosis or Isis or, you know, those kind of bands and then merging that with like the sort of the frenetic intensity of black metal but without sort of taking on the image of what black, like the second wave of Norwegian black metal. So it's sort of like, um, I would say, yeah, I would say it's like longer songs, longer compositions with a lot of atmosphere that lends itself from like uh, the post-metal vibe with a lot of clean guitars, a lot of like sort of minimal parts where there's also not a lot of like emphasis on vocals. And so it's more like movement based. So taking that and then mixing that up with some black metal and like obviously like the harsh vocals, and the tremolo guitar picking and stuff. So I would say that is post black metal, and then a lot of people also kind of associated with bands that don't have like the sort of um, corpse paint or you know like that kind of like evil satanic look. Yeah. So I'd say, I, I would say it's modern, it's modern black metal with more of a melodic sensibility. Okay, that was very specific. The two stupid, and they're they're kind of stupid. The two terms I've heard for it is radio friendly black metal, and. Uh, and black metal without the corpse paint. <laughs> yeah, black metal without corpse paint is quite a funny, funny one. I like that actually. But you know what the thing, the thing that people are also, because what they're also saying is that like there's a big shoegaze element in post black metal, and there's like this whole thing called black gaze. And ah oh, man, I don't really care for the title so much. As uh, I, I guess for me, what is a bit sad because I actually I really love Death Heaven a lot. But I think any band that's sort of playing... Oh, actually, you know what? It's Alex, another thing that is a big characteristic of post-black metal that a lot of people like 
especially opposed to uh, sort of more traditional black metal, is that there's a lot of there's, um, a big use of like major chords, like in the guitar playing. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of uplifting um, type of chord progressions where you wouldn't really find that in older black metal, which is definitely more kind of like minor type stuff. Of course, there is the minor element as well, but there's a lot of uplifting like power chords and um, I think that's how it sort of appeals to the, at, at least in Death Heaven in East Sunbay, the Sunbathe, it sort of had like kind of, I wouldn't say mainstream appeal, but it like, you know, blew up in the underground because there was this feeling of, I don't know, empowerment almost when you listen to it, as opposed to like, uh, you know, like wailing and being miserable. Yeah. I think the best way to describe post-black metal is evil music yeah. for good people. <laughs> that, that, I mean, that should be like a, some band slogan. That's so good. <laughs> I, I've recommended it to a couple of bands before, but they haven't used it, so you have a chance now to steal it. <laughs> um, I like that. Evil music for good people. Yeah. And uh, I just have one more question for you, but um, yeah. you, you, you guys currently still reside in uh, Cape Town, South Africa, right? Yes, yes, we do. Yep. Um, I've actually interviewed um, a couple of bands from, like, uh, not just South Africa, but, like, from yeah. just the continent. Like, I interviewed Skin Flint from Gaborone, Botswana, uh, last year. And okay. I've, and I've interviewed, and I know that South Africa is home to some great bands. Is there kind of, like, a yeah. metal scene in South Africa that Constellation is affiliated with? Or is the goal right now to kind of go outside your hometown a little bit more to spread the name? Yeah. Out? Um, so the thing is, like, I think, especially during the 90s and the 2000s, metal was a lot bigger year than it is now. I think it's sort of been usurped by, like, you know, dance music and, and, and like, more electronic-based music. So, unfortunately, the scene has, you know, it all dwindled over the last, I'd say, five years. But, I mean, there is a scene, and there are some, there are some decent bands in it. We, to be honest... It, 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 the, the senior feels incredibly, um, I mean, it's just really minuscule, to be honest. And like beyond that, there's not a, people don't really want uh, progression or like an advancement of music. So the bands that we sort of tend to generate here are, are, are quite traditional, but not in a like sort of like forward thinking sense. I don't know. It just seems incredibly incestuous. And it's like, I don't know, for me, I feel there's also like a bit of racism and I don't know, I just don't really want anything to do with it to be honest. Not because I think we're better than everyone, I just, I think our type of fans and the people that appreciate our kind of music are unfortunately, I would say 95% not African, you know? Mm-hmm. Okay. So yeah. There is something here man, look like Behemoth came down, Cannibal Corpse came down, Carcass over the years, we've had so many Napalm Death, we've had so many great bands coming here. But it's, uh, you know, it's kind of like a drop in the in the ocean and then nothing happens for a while and then something happens again and then, you know, I wouldn't say there's like a burgeoning scene where things are happening every weekend. Yeah, you guys are kind of like isolated in a way. Yeah, I know, of course, of course you are. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> before we go, I want to thank you so much for your time today. Uh, is there just anything else with Constellation that you would like to promote? Like when we could be expecting the follow-up to the language of limbs and... Uh, you know, can, can we maybe, when all this is over, maybe see you guys in the States one day? We would love to have you here. Yeah, absolutely, man. We really want to come so badly. Uh, where in New York are you based, by the way? I live in Manhattan, so... Oh, Manhattan. Okay, so you're in the financial district, eh? Yeah, or more more north of that, like in the, in the center, near Times Square. Oh, near Times Square. Wow, that must be... <laughs> is, is, is Times Square just, like, busy or, like, 24 hours around the clock kind of thing? Uh, not during this time. N- not during this time. You would, if if I was, of course, of course. yes, 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 of course. Yeah, if I was in a coma and I walked in the middle of Times Square, like when this whole happened, I would have thought that the world ended. Wow, wow, <laughs> that 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 sounds like a crazy post-apocalyptic film right there. Yeah, I, I can only imagine how many bands are writing awesome music if they're based here. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing. Um, well, just seeing what bands come up with after this whole thing. Um, Sort of guys down. But yeah, we are definitely planning on coming there. Um, I don't know if it will happen next year, but I can definitely say that uh, 2022 we will we will be in the States. And yeah, definitely next, like our new album, we nearly finished writing it now, so we're going to go start recording in the next month or two. And I'd say early next year it will come out. Awesome. 
Well, thank you so much, Keenan. Yeah. Everybody, we are here with Keenan of Constellation. Be sure to pick up the language of limbs if you haven't already. New stuff coming soon. We'll see you next time on Heavy New York.